It is always great speaking to the UFC featherweight champion. Alexander Volkanovsky is going to be taking on the Korean Zombie. UFC 273, April 9th. It's right around the corner. Alex, how are you, sir? I'm very good, man. I'm very good. How are you? I am doing awesome. Thank you so much for asking. Uh, explain this whole situation to me because you were supposed to fight Max Holloway and then they put in the Korean zombie as a replacement. And then we find out a little bit later that Max actually probably could make the fight time. So was it just a case that they needed you to fight at that time? What What's sort of the reason for why uh, Holloway appears to be healthy now? Oh, man, I mean, I don't know. I don't really know the, the full situation to be, to be quite honest. Um, so even when they originally uh, <clears throat> announced the fight, like, you know, we're still going through uh, everything and then all of a sudden they announced it. So even that was a, seemed like they pulled the trigger a bit early on that one. Whether they were going through negotiations with Max or something, like, I don't know. It could be a bigger bigger uh, part to the story. I'm not too sure. But uh, they, they announced it all good the next day. <clears throat> they said there was an injury, like an ongoing uh, uh, injury or something like that, which obviously was disappointing. But um, And we're told that, you know, that you know, they ain't going to be able to reschedule. It's going to be too long. So we're like, all right, well, let's just, I don't want to wait bloody half a year. Mm-hmm. So uh, we were, we decided, let's go who it is. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll bring it like they, they thought a zombie was good. We thought a zombie was good. So that's what we went with. And then I heard that and I was just like, obviously I uh, went and uh, said, said some things, uh, you know, just, but again, I don't know the full story, just uh, having a bit of fun with it. Obviously it was a little frustrating because I would have just said, let's just, we could have just pushed it back. You know what I mean? It was like not even a, a month. So uh, that, again, it was a little disappointing, but at the same time, at least there's a, a new face, new blood, and, and someone that I've always wanted to, to fight anyway in Zombie. <clears throat> the fact that, you know, he's just been one of the top dudes of the featherweight divisions f- forever, you know what I mean? So uh, yeah. he's definitely a name that, that, that I wanted uh, to always take out. So at least this fight uh, gets to happen anyway. Yeah, and I should clarify, you were supposed to fight on UFC 272. They ended up moving this to 273, and then that's where the zombie fight came in, and then this Max Holloway injury apparently was healed uh, in time. So it's just a weird situation, but I did see your tweet. Um, I think you kind of insinuated that, you know, if Max wants to be the backup, it's kind of an advantage for him. Um, You know, was there much blowback from his fans? I know you were joking, but you know how people are on social media. Oh, man, of course they're going to be, you know what I mean? But I mean... Yeah, they, they're going to hate me no matter what. So it doesn't really matter. So it's a, it's all good. But again, obviously, it was a little uh, frustration mm-hmm. uh, as well as, you know, thinking that, oh, I'm going to just do it just to, you know, stir the pot, maybe just to, you know. It was, yeah, whatever. Anyway, you know what I mean? But at the same time, you know, obviously, uh, I'm over it. Uh, I got uh, got someone else in front of me. So that's, uh, that's all that I'm focusing on right now. Uh, but yeah, man, it's just, uh, yeah, again, it was a little frustrating just because I wanted to fight. And, uh, you know, but I mean, the frustrating part is whether that was even the case, you know, obviously we heard from uh, Brett Okamoto, heard from uh, a few different uh, people that he wanted to be a backup. But I mean, you never know the full story. <clears throat> but again, you know, you don't want a trilogy. You know, how, do, how does that, you know, having a trilogy while, uh, you know, I'm preparing for someone or even just that you want you want to properly build the fight up and all that type of stuff. So obviously if that, that, that fight, if that trilogy is going to happen, you do it properly. We don't do it as a fill-in because that just doesn't make sense. So, um, you know, whether he was just playing a, a few games as well, you know what I mean? And um, that's why I thought I'll just, uh, you know, play, play some back. A bit of fun. But uh, anyway, you know, it's uh, that's it. You know, that, that's all, all it really was. But obviously I'm, I'm over that because I've got zombie and <clears throat> looking forward to that, man, because, uh, you know, it's a cracking card. Uh, mate, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling really good. I can't wait to go out there and just uh, show my skills. Does it add a little bit more as well that Zombie's <clears throat> going to be working with Henry Cejudo, someone you've been linked to in the past? It's kind of like, you know, and I think Cejudo had a quote being like, oh, well, if I can't fight him, I'll I'll train someone to, to beat him. Uh, does that add a bit more to this fight? Oh, yeah, it will for sure. Yeah, I reckon it will. Like, it'll be funny just, uh, you know, obviously I'm not diving too much into that. I don't know how much they're even training, whether it was just a little publicity stunt or is he still there? I don't even know. But, um, It'll be funny, you know what I mean? Like, cause, uh, yeah, he's probably going to say some things and, uh, you know, and it's going to go exactly opposite to probably what they're saying is going to happen. So it'll be funny to just uh, sort of laugh at him uh, once I get my hands raised. But <laughs> yeah. but at the same time, you know, he's going to have his fun and do his thing. And I don't mind Henry, to be honest. I mean, obviously, you know, we, we have a go at each other, but it's just a bit of fun. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, I don't fully take him serious uh, until... I need to take him serious. So <clears throat> until then, I'll just keep punching heads. 
Let's talk about who you're going to be punching in the head on uh, April 9th. It is uh, Korean Zombie, (laughs) who's pretty well-rounded. And, you know, he's been in the game for a while. I think people forget he did fight for the title against Jose Aldo uh, many moons ago. Um, Style-wise, how are you looking at this fight compared to some of the other opponents? Ah, man, like, uh, stylistically, it's a good matchup for me. And I just think, well, I'll say that to whoever was across from me. I feel like I'm a bad match for, uh, for anyone. And even if... Someone that does whatever problems people give me, I'm the type of fighter that I can adjust my style to nullify these problems and things like that. You know what I mean? That's the type of fighter I am. So, but uh, in saying that, you know, I think uh, my style um, works well with uh, someone like Zombie. I think he's going to change things up a little bit. Uh, whether that is with Suhudo or these, I think their team's going to know that they can't just fight. You know the the same way a zombie always does. <clears throat> so I'm expecting a, a different fighter. I think someone who's going to change it up, but that's not easy either, is it? So someone mm-hmm. that has to change their style, something that they've been so good at for so long to, to try and fight me. Look, I have, I've had to do it before. I was successful, but it ain't easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, you know, if he's going to try and change things up, it won't be long before that gets really, really uncomfortable for him, especially with the, my movement and things like that and things I'm going to have him worrying about. Uh, you know what I mean? So we'll see what happens, but he's dangerous, yeah? He's exciting, you know? And I think uh, I'm going to give him these problems and he's just going to try and knock my head off, you know what I mean? So he's just going to come forward, which will make it a fun fight anyway. He's going to leave a lot of openings for me, so I just need to cap- capitalise on that. But uh, I think I'll uh, be getting him a little frustrated in there and uh, and make him pay for it. Anything different for this camp, or has it been pretty much business as usual as far as training partners and, and everything in terms of preparation for this fight? Yeah, man, everything's been pretty much the same. Like, uh, this, as the last few camps, we've had to do it here in Australia, all of them. I always do my camps in Australia, but usually, as people know, I'd go to, like, City Kickboxing, or I'd go to Thailand for a little bit, um, like Tiger Muay Thai, and things like that. So, <clears throat> like, you know, obviously we can't do that stuff. It's slowly starting to open, so these things are starting to open up a little bit, but um, it was good to actually have uh, some of the city kickboxing boys after they were, they were in uh, America. They come because they couldn't go straight home. They had to wait two weeks, so they thought, all right, we'll wait two weeks here in Australia. So they were here with me, training with me, and uh, us at Freestyle Fighting Gym, which was uh, was pretty cool. Uh, but we got a, a heap of guys here, you know what I mean? So it's always good. We always get guys from all around Australia to come help with camp. So I've got a fighter's house for them, and... Um, yeah, we just we just get the numbers in and got good bodies uh, moving with us. A lot of different bodies too, which uh, which is good. <clears throat> Did you get to work with Dan Hooker uh, at the time of recording this? He's fighting on Saturday. No, nah, no, I didn't because he's obviously been in uh, New Zealand, so I haven't been able to train with any of the guys in New Zealand because they're there. But the guys that were in America, they had to come back. They just uh, came through uh, Australia on the way home. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. That makes sense. Um, obviously, Hooker's in your division now. He was before, but now he's moved back. Have you and him spoken uh, about that? I know, you know, he, I think he was asked about if he would fight you, and he said, you know, we'll cross that bridge. But is that something that's crossed your mind at all about him entering back in the featherweight division? Oh, man, it doesn't really cross your mind only when people ask ask about it, really, I guess. But, I mean, uh, at the same time, you know, it's a, this is a sport. Like, you know, you can't expect these guys not to be in your division. And now he's chosen that division. He thinks that's the, the best decision for his career. And I support that. So if we, if whatever happens, if, if further down the track we, we need to do it, then, then we'll do it. You know, that's just how it is. But, I mean, that's, that, that's, that's fine. You know what I mean? That's, that's all good. Uh, um, you know, I wish nothing but the best for him. And I'm sure he wishes nothing but the best for, for me. So, <clears throat> you know, if, if, they, if, they, if that, these our paths uh, do cross – We'll worry about that then. But till then, you know, we've obviously got fights in front of us that we'll, we'll worry about. How, how do you think Dan will do? Uh, he's fighting Arnold Allen. I know you'll be a little bit biased here, but it seemed like the cut is, is going well for him. I spoke to him not that long ago. It seems like he's going to be a problem for this division. Yeah, man, he's a professional. He's a professional. So if he uh, can make the weight, he will make the weight. You know, even if he can't really make the weight, he'll make the weight. You know what I mean? So uh, he, he, he's going to make it. And uh, I think... Uh, yeah, because he's so professional, I think he will make it pretty much with ease. You know, maybe fighting, even if he fights at the same weight or a little bit lighter, I think uh, I don't think he's going to have any problems, to be quite honest. And um, I think, uh, you know, again, yeah, maybe there's a bias, but Arnold Allen's no joke. Arnold Allen is actually a really good fighter, but I think uh, Dan Hooker, obviously with the team, and they're going to come up with a, a good strategy to, to break Arnold Allen down and, and get the victory.
<clears throat> yeah, no, I agree with that. Uh, have you heard this conspiracy theory, Alex? You probably haven't, but I'll bring it to your attention. So there is a conspiracy theory out there that the reason Dan moved down to featherweight is because you plan on moving up a weight class. What, how do you respond to that? <laughs> now, I mean, I, I'm, I'm planning on staying in featherweight. Even if I move up, I mean, like, I'll be... I want to float in both, you know what I mean? I'm not I'm not saying that I want it to just move to lightweight and stay in lightweight. Uh, when people ask me about, do you ever think of a move to lightweight, it is double champ status, you know what I mean? While I still got both bets, you know what I mean? And, and play uh, both the role of a uh, lightweight champ and featherweight champ, you know, that's my vision. Not just fighting in a, in a lightweight, because <clears throat> I make featherweight uh, reasonably easy, and uh, so there's no reason for me to have to move up. But, um, yeah, that's just, yeah, I guess I'll let people uh, think what they want, but <laughs> you never know, I guess. But, yeah, that's not my plans right now. Yeah, and again, you're fighting Zombie here in the ninth, but looking at the lightweight division, what matchups excite you the most? I mean, there's the Champ Oliveira, obviously there's Gaethje. Is there is there a couple, you know, names uh, in that division that really excite you as far as a, a matchup? There is, man. There's a lot of names in the lightweight division. <clears throat> that's something that, uh, you know, obviously it is a competitive division, um, but there's a lot of big names there as well. So, I think uh, it's stack division. If you look at the lower weight from top to bottom, like the guy, even guys outside the top fifteen, I think they're just as hard as the guys in the top fifteen, if not harder. But then you've got these guys that are really big names. You know what I mean? So that that division holds a uh, uh, some some good name value there. So that's obviously a lot of fights that that interests me. So anyone really up there in the top <clears throat> would uh, definitely interest me. And I feel like again, I'm going to believe in my abilities. You know what I mean? I'm not. You know, I'm not that that cocky type that I can beat anyone, but you know, I mean, at the same time, I'm confident in my abilities, and I can see myself winning a lot of those fights. You know what I mean? If if not all them fights, you know what I mean. So that's the type of uh, guy I am, and, and that's the that's that's my visions, and these are my goals, and things like that. And uh, you know what I mean? I've I've conquered all my goals so far, and so why stop here? I'm going to keep keep uh, keep going until I, I get all these uh, statuses I want. And speaking of goals, April 9th, Korean Zombie. How do you envision that fight playing out with you and Zombie? Man, it's going to be a fun fight. I know that is that for sure. I'm expecting to go out there and really, really put, put on a good performance. And, man, I'll be pretty disappointed. And this is no disrespect to Zombie, but I'll be pretty disappointed if I do not finish that fight inside the three. Um, I think uh, where I'm at right now, uh, what I'm seeing right now is just I feel like I'm on a whole other level, um, no matter where it goes. I feel like uh, if there's a if, if it gets the clinch gets to the floor or wherever it is on the feet, I feel like I'm just going to be too much. I'm going to overwhelm him and I'm going to get that finish. <clears throat> and that's purely again. I know he's tough. You know, he's just like you know. Obviously, my last few fights with these guys have just got chins for days. But um, I just think where I'm at right now, um, I'm just going to be way too much. And you know what I mean. I, I need to. Not pr- really prove that to anyone else, but prove that to myself. I know where, where I am and I know what I'm expecting. So I'll be d- disappointed if I don't go that and prove that to myself. Uh, and then obviously all the sex- success around that will follow. But this is what I expect. This is what I want to prove to myself. So I'm going to go out there and do that. We talked earlier about Max Holloway being the backup potentially for this fight. Have you been told that that's the case? Is there going to be a backup for this title fight? Uh, no, no, that's yeah, that's not. Obviously, uh, if that was ever brought to us, we'd be like, that just doesn't make sense. I don't think the UFC would take that serious as well. They would know that mm-hmm. that's the that trilogy wouldn't wouldn't go down like that. So um, no, they haven't told me anyone for for a replacement. So. Yeah, well, I'll throw one name at you only because I spoke to him right after his fight. Uh, Calvin Cater appears to be gung ho to be the backup. Um, just first, w- w- was that a suitable option? Do you think? And two, do you think he deserves it? I know he's coming off a win, but he also lost to Holloway quite decisively uh, two fights prior. Oh man, like uh, oh, I think he's definitely deserving of a uh, of a being a backup and things like that. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, there's a lot of guys that will be deserved. At the end of the day, a backup's a different story, but. You know, that's something that uh, my team in the UFC are going to have to talk about because, <clears throat> again, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, does a champ really need to to fight a backup fighters? We'll yeah, there's see, a lot of risk I mean, there. Uh, I think people forget yeah, it's exactly not just right, it's not just the backup fighter who's taking the risk. It's the it's the guy who's actually scheduled to fight because you got to switch things up. It, it could be a, a different opponent, right? You know what I mean? Obviously, on the challenger's end, they're like, oh, yeah, whatever it is, I can fight for an interim title. You know what I mean? I don't have to face a champ. Oh, yeah, definitely they'll jump on that. But um, yeah, I've never been in that that situation. Uh, I've been the replacement fighter, 
you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, but at the same time, obviously, uh, I don't think we've ever had anyone ready to be the, the backup. Well, the UFC have never never told that to us. So um, I don't know if uh, how, how that works, whether my team's talking to UFC for that. Uh, I'm not sure. But, I mean, obviously, <clears throat> if there's injuries and things like that, maybe I can just push fights. I'd rather just push fights back rather than just someone come in at the last week, no matter who it is whether it's Kader, whether it's uh, Giga, whether it's Henry Cejudo, whether it's Max or stuff or something like that. Um, you know, I think that's a, as, as a professional and things like that, you know, I don't think that, that makes that makes sense. If all goes well on April 9th, again, not looking past the fight. I'm the one asking the question. So it was just to clarify for people out there, but uh, is, is the understanding that Max will fight uh, you, uh, the winner of this fight on April 9th, or, or could there be another opponent? What what's sort of your understanding at this point? Uh, we don't know the understanding, to be honest. Uh, you haven't had, a, again, my, my, I let my managers do all the talking and, and whatnot. <clears throat> again, it would have been good to just get that uh, out, out of the way, but we didn't. So whether that happens later in the year or, or something like that, but it, it just depends on the contenders, right? So, uh, you know, at the same time, I don't need to, to, to prove myself to the haters and all that type of stuff, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm over all that. But, I mean, if there's no one else... If there's no other contenders, top contenders, then I want the next big, big, biggest fight and the, the, the next best guy. And if uh, no one's stepping up and fighting each other to take that to take that title, then it's going to be whoever's there. And you know, and Max has uh, proved that he was there. That's why he was going to get the trilogy. So if people aren't going to go there and do work, then uh, we're going to have no other choice but to do, to do a trilogy. So it depends on what happens in the division. But um, you know, I don't know. You know, you're seeing some talks whether there is movement. We'll see. Obviously, Max is injured. I don't know the, the full story with that. Uh, but I want to get three fights this year. So that's something that, you know, I don't want to wait around too much. So I'm hoping we have someone uh, in the near future. Are you driven by the whole, you know, greatest of all time talk uh, in the featherweight division? Because you're certainly, I mean, getting those two wins over <laughs> Holloway, you beat Jose Aldo. Does that drive you at all? I know you're just, you know, you're a guy that loves competing and likes competing at a high level, but, um, you know, that you're, you're kind of getting to that point with some of these wins with Holloway and then the most recent performance against Ortega. Yeah, man, it's just something that I've never really thought, really thought too much about. Like I would never really cared about that. You know, I was always a fun for my family. You know what I mean? I was just competitive and just whatever's in front of me. You know what I mean? I've just always, you know, plot along like that, uh, which has worked. But at the same time, I'm at a stage now where I'm looking at a lot bigger picture now. I am looking at the, you know, the legacy, you know, the GOAT talks, uh, all that type of stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, <clears throat> and you need to. You know, I sit there and talk about wanting to feed my family for the rest of my life. You know, being the GOAT of division, having a legacy, you know, to, to live off as well, you know what I mean? So that's something that I definitely want to do. I do want to be in the history books and all that type of stuff. I never used to care too much about that, but now I do. It's I'm um, growing into all that. I'm growing uh, so much in so many ways, you know, not only as a fighter, but uh, obviously as a, as a professional athlete, as an entertainer, you know, as a showman and all that type of stuff. I'm growing so much and I'm learning more and more about myself and more and more about the game, um, you know, so that's why I feel like a, uh, I'm definitely maturing in in that sense, uh, so uh, I've definitely got my eye on all the all them uh, them goat statuses, pound for pound, you know, all that type of stuff. You know what I mean? That's definitely on my radar, and, and I'm not too far away from uh, ticking off a lot of those. <clears throat> Is there a dream opponent, past, present, future that you'd love to fight at some point? I mean, uh, you like I said, you just beat Holloway, you beat Aldo, you fought Ortega, but maybe you know, like a Conor McGregor uh, at featherweight. I'm just thinking, you know, past and present. Is there is there any opponents out there that that you kind of wish that would be like a dream fight? Ah, oh, man, obviously Conor's always going to get his name out there, but I mean, there's you got to remember he was a featherweight, he was a champion of my division. You know what I mean? So I've taken out the the featherweight, uh, you know, the featherweight champs. So to take out a, a, the, what if that's the only one left, isn't it? Yeah, it's just Connor. So it was uh, me, Aldo, Max, you know what I mean? And Connor. So uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. Obviously, <clears throat> it would be a dream. And then I've taken out all the other champs in my division. So uh, that would be uh, incredible. Obviously, you talk about the payday and all that, the circus around it would be great. But at the same time, you talk about legacy. Um, that's definitely a... Uh, and he's undefeated in featherweight too. So, uh, you know, that's that would that would mean something. But, I mean, I don't think he's making featherweight I was going to say, the soon. photos we've seen recently, I think for, I think he'd have to cut a leg off to make 45 at this point. It'd be uh, it'd be pretty tough. But, I mean, uh, obviously with fight, you'd, be, you'd, you'd do it at any weight. You know, I'd do that at welterweight if I had to, whatever. Um, but, you know, at the same time, 
we'll see. I'll just worry about zombie because zombie's in front of me. And we'll see, uh, you know, you might get some drunk tweets from uh, Conor McGregor again and uh, maybe we can write off that and see, see, see what happens from there. <laughs> but, but hold on, just to clarify, you just said it there. You'd fight Conor McGregor at welterweight? I'd fight him, yeah, 100% I would. I'd fight him at any weight. Okay, I like that. That's cool, 100%. that's cool. Yeah, that doesn't, doesn't surprise me uh, hearing that from you. Um, I mentioned Calvin Cater earlier. What did you make of his win over Giga Chikaze? I think a lot of people were counting him out after the Holloway performance, but he went out there and he looked great. Oh, he did. He did look great. You know, I still feel like there was uh, some holes, but I mean, the guy, I, I liked the fact that he had a game plan and had a bit of strategy to really uh, nullify um, <clears throat> Giga, uh, which was, I don't think it was like too, what's the right word, adverse? No, 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 I don't know if that's the right word. I don't think it was like the, some greater strategy that completely nullified it, like, um, it just seemed like, you know, you know, he nullified that giga kick and, you know, put a little bit of pressure and things like that and it completely shut him down. Uh, but, you know, again, you know, I look at this and I'm pretty critical because, I you know, I, I like to really break fights down. Like, I look at it and I obviously put myself in these situations and, you know, things that uh, Katie would do, did then, would that work on me? No, it wouldn't. But at the same time, to see him make some changes and adjust for that fight was pretty incredible because uh, watching him against Max Holloway, he really struggled to adjust that fight. He he started doing you know the, he, you know he was just constantly doing the same pattern, same pattern, and obviously Max just absolutely capitalised on that. And he didn't know how to mix it up and change it up. So to see him evolve and be able to mix things up for the person in front of him was I felt like that was pretty impressive. There was still a lot of uh, holes and things like that, but I mean at the same time, as uh, I definitely seen him evolve in in other areas, which was was pretty cool. And another featherweight who's been making some noise a few weeks ago, Bryce Mitchell, uh, getting that really dominant win over Edson Barbosa. What did you think of his victory and his potential as a contender in your weight class? Yeah, man, like I said, there's so many guys that are just not too far away, you know what I mean, which is pretty exciting. And I just need need them to keep fighting because I want these guys. I want the, I want these contenders. I want these guys that everyone's going, this one's, yeah, he's definitely next. Let's do it. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, look good, you know, against Barbosa. You know, to go, go out there and uh, just completely dominate him. Uh, was was pretty impressive, but again, you know what? Uh, I look at uh, it. <clears throat> I put myself in their shoes. You know, I look at obviously Bryce Mitchell's style. I, I think I'm a very bad matchup for for Bryce Mitchell, but I mean, uh, he, he looked he looked great. He looked great. I thought I thought he uh, the way he's controlling that was uh, pretty pretty impressive. So uh, credit to him. Taking a hard turn here. Uh, have you been following what's going on with Kane Velasquez? Have you seen what's going on in the news with him? Obviously, a really unfortunate situation. What's happening? Yeah, it is unfortunate. It is unfortunate where, you know, you see some people doing shit like that and then they almost get a slap on the wrist. And then you see someone like that who, you know, heat of the moment, you could just see the emotions that would be involved in something like that. And then, you know, he's going to be paying a crazy price when uh, these other guys, like I said, get a slap on the wrist, which is just a complete bullshit. You know what I mean? Uh, I know this needs to come into play. You know what I mean? Like, you know, obviously someone's not going to be thinking completely straight when some shit like that happens. You know what I mean? So, and this hits close to home. Anyone with the kids going to know that, you know what I mean? Like, I think Dana hit the nail on the head. Everyone that he did exactly what everyone said that they would do if they were in that situation. You know what I mean? And, and that's true. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. But again, it's a, uh, obviously laws are, are laws, but I mean, <clears throat> there's got to be – some things need to come into play. You know, you can't treat this as just a a crazy act of madness. You know what I mean? Like, let's let's be let's be real with this. He was would have been emotionally unstable in that situation and did something that has to come into play, especially when your kids are involved and, and shit like that's involved. But, um, yeah, so I'm hoping – I don't know what's happened. I'm, I'm hoping, he, you know, he doesn't uh, get in too, too, too much trouble for it, but – I don't know. The law can be pretty messed up sometimes. It certainly can. Yeah. No, I wanted to get your perspective as a fellow dad. Um, I, I don't think we spoke after the uh, after the win over Brian Ortega. Um, are things? Did you guys kind of bury the hatchet, or is there still something there? Because I know we showed you a bit of respect after the fight, but there was a lot of emotions on that season of the Ultimate Fighter, uh, and, and obviously, uh, you know, there, there's a, there's a lot there. Yeah, man. Look, I think it's just when you're spending so much time with each other competing and all that, and you start to. I went to got to a stage where I was looking for things to annoying me uh you know what i mean i was trying to stir him and trying to get in his head and little things like that and then little things he would say would annoy me because i'm probably looking for it so it was 
you know, obviously I was like, uh, you know, I thought, uh, this bloke, you know, I mean, look, who does he think he is? You know, I was a bit like that before, but um, once we shared that moment and um, even the, yeah, again, even like he proved me wrong in, in many ways. So I definitely think we, we buried the hatchet. I even talked to him a couple of times on, uh, on like the social media and all that and just said, mate, you know, well done. You earn my respect and things like that. <clears throat> I think after the fight, he goes, uh, you know, I reckon, I remember telling you that if, we had beers together. We could, uh, you know, we could we could be homies. We could be cool. And I was like, yeah, I probably knew that. I just didn't want to believe it at the time. You know what I mean? But yeah, I think uh, I think uh, we're we're pretty cool now. So, uh, but again, like I said, when you're on the Ultimate Fighter, you're filming so much with each other. You know what I mean? You you got guys. You know, I'm co- I'm coaching. Like, I, I'm going to get emotionally connected with some of these guys, and then like you know, seeing people gloat and things like that. I was like, all oh, right, yeah, you're going to be like that. You know, and some things that I said are going to. Yeah, maybe they don't get under my skin, but I'm going to be like, hey, you prick, you know what I mean? So that's sort of where it was. It was never like, I'm going to kill this bloke, you know what I mean? But I mean, at the same time, I was like, you know, it was just more like that. I was like, what the hell is this guy doing? You know what I mean? So it was more like that. But again, at the same time, I'm sure he would have felt the same way about me. <laughs> but I mean, but we all good now. What did you make of Islam Mahashev's win a few weeks ago? Um, you know, they're, they're saying now that he, or at least Dana's sort of insinuating he might have to take another fight before he uh, get, gets a title shot. What do you make of that? Because they're talking now maybe Connor's going to get it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if uh, Connor's going to get it. Obviously, you could, if uh, Islam's pretty disappointed with that, you can see why. Um, obviously, that RDA situation really uh, backfired on him. Um, I think the fact that he call, called him out I'm pretty sure. I think uh, Islam called uh, RDA he said he'd take out, the fight, yeah. And RDA goes, "All right, let's do it," and then pulls out. Yeah, so that um, you know, that that wouldn't have looked too good. And uh, you know, I feel like uh, Dana's just like going, "All right, you want to do shit like that? I'm going to make you pay." So yeah, it's nasty stuff, but. <laughs> It is, it is. Yeah. Well, I think, I think just also, I think, I think people feel like it, we want to see Islam tested, right? He's, he's been beating all these guys, you know, relatively, uh, you know, like, like quickly. Um, uh, do you, do you feel like Islam has done enough to deserve a title shot? Or are you with the UFC where they're like, Hey, you need one more fight. It's hard when you're going to get a lot of the top guys that, you know, won't really fight him as well. So that, that's a hard situation. I'm sure that, um, you know, full camp, if it was going to be RDA and they had a proper camp to do it, like he would have took that fight. But maybe he said he obviously posted it, then had a good hard think about it. Goes, oh, a couple of bloody a week out, not even. And you know what I mean? Maybe he was like, ah, look, I don't need to do that. I'm fine for the title anyway. You know what I mean? So, um, <clears throat> but I'm sure he would have fought him if it was a proper camp and, you know, the title wasn't, you know, he wasn't losing the title for it and things like that. So you've got to feel for him. But does he deserve it? I think he does purely because I can see him doing that to whoever else they put in front of him, to be honest. So, uh, you know, if they do put Darush in front of him, I like uh, Darush, but I think uh, Islam's just going to do the same thing. I think uh, Islam uh, is next level and he's going to be fine for the title very, very soon. Alex, I know I'm cutting into your morning. Thank you so much for doing this. If there's anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, man, obviously uh, my social media, at uh, Alex Volkanovsky. YouTube channel, make sure you've got my YouTube channel. We've got some cooking content fight reactions, all that type of stuff. Uh, we're getting right into that. Uh, and there's some sponsors, obviously, CMB, uh, T, uh, Combat Nutrition, uh, Engage, uh, Fightwear, Sportsbet, shout out to Sportsbet. Um, and yeah, there's uh, plenty of others, but I'll leave it at that. And shout out to all my fans and their supporters. Make sure you tune in April uh, t- uh, 9th, uh, your time, April 10th in Australia. Uh, make sure you tune in. We're going to put on a show. 